Hey, 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 Fit Mama, Jen Oliver here, your host of the Fit Mama podcast. This is the work in to your workout. Hey, 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 Fit Mama, welcome to this week's episode 103 with Dr. Kim Bretz. I'm so excited to introduce you to Kim. She is a naturopathic doctor. She lives in the Waterloo region in Canada. She's a speaker, consultant, and adjunct faculty at the University of Waterloo in the pharmacy department. So she is a passionate international public speaker, and she's presented to tons of corporations and agencies. She's a guest lecturer in universities for areas like health promotion, functional foods, and natural healthcare products. She does so much really cool stuff that you can check out more about her at her website. I'm going to link up everything in the show notes about her. She's an ardent supporter of education and interprofessionalism. And this is what I love about her. She taught gastrointestinal physiology and endocrinology at the Canadian College of Massage and Hydrotherapy. She teaches a course in complementary and alternative medicine, focusing on interprofessionalism at the School of Pharmacy at the University of Waterloo and has worked with the Piper program out of McMaster, where I used to go for my master's. And she's also been involved in the role of clinical lead in a research trial through the University of Guelph. So she's just all over the place. She does a lot of consulting. She does a lot of speaking. She has a knowledge on the gut like very few I have ever met. I am so in love with her. She's hilarious. She's sweet. She's amazing practitioner. She's an incredible communicator and she really gets the job done. She's taught me a ton. I love talking to her and you know what? I think you're going to love her. So let's not wait another second. Here I am with Kim Bretz. Hello and welcome Kim. Hello, it's so fantastic to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you and I can't wait to dive into today's topic with you. It is, you know, this is just such a good time to talk about this. I mean, in the time is now always, so look at that. And you know what? I mean, you have such a wealth and breadth of knowledge that I'm so excited to share with the Fit Mamas today. And the thing I love the most, I think, of all the stuff that we've talked about is how you have this resounding knowing and belief that you don't have to eliminate everything in your life. It doesn't have to be take away, take away, take away, avoiding, avoiding to feel better, which seems to be sometimes all that we can tune into. Yeah, I I really see and I I do see value in actually taking away foods. A, A lot of the patients that come into my office have gut issues or hormone issues or things that we have to play around with the diet. Um, But that's just to give us an idea of what's going on. I don't actually believe that health is having to avoid foods forever and ever and ever. And that actually could make things a problem long term. Mm, Um, We're going to dive into that. Eat and enjoy life. Yes. And so, so you see a lot of people who have gut issues. Let's talk about gut issues. What are gut issues? I'm talking every day right now with people about bloating. Just record every day if you're feeling bloated or not. And it's amazing what being bloated can teach us. Oh yeah. Bloating is a huge sign. And a lot of the time it's it's a sign that something's off. And now the way that we're understanding things, we understand that it often means that the bacteria that live inside of us, and we're estimating that there's about 40 trillion of them, yeah. but they're out of bed balance, the good and bad. Um, And so bloating um, can indicate that. And then that can result in things like socially inappropriate gas that we're experiencing, Mm. or we can get that upward push um, Mm. that we get heartburn or um, belching that's happening. That doesn't always feel great when we're in a meeting at work, Um, almost like that pregnancy upward push that we can get that Mm. heartburn that happens that way. Um, So I see that really commonly with people, or we started wearing one size of pants in the morning. And then by the end of the day, you're just hoping that you can wear yoga pants, although technically right now we can all wear yoga pants all the time, which is pretty fantastic. Um, But that's not great 
No. And then it's the pain. It's the mm-hmm. physical pain and the bowel changes. It, this is what I see all the time. Oh, um, I used to live and- that life. That was me. Oh my gosh. I was all of those things. I was, I, me and my friends used to joke, oh my gosh, this is how I'll look when I'm pregnant. This was way yeah. before I was ever pregnant. I look like I was six months pregnant almost every day. And I have to say, I mean, in healthcare in general, I see mainly women. Mm. Uh, but even with the men that I see, I'll ask the question of, so how many months pregnant do you look when this is happening? <laughs> and like, it's a, it is something that in some people, they just feel bloated and feel like they're full all the time. But in some people will actually see, I start out with a flat stomach in the morning and then by the end of the day... I'm seven months Mm. and that's crazy. Mm -hmm. There's something that's really wrong there. Mm -hmm. And we can see that if we take food away and that makes it go away, that there's something that's wrong, but it's usually not the food. Mm -hmm. It's what's happening inside of us. That's the bigger issue. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And, and all these digestive upsets, I mean, we're going to see our doctors. I know back in the day I went to see my doctor and the doctor was like, Oh, you have IBS. And I was like, Oh, what is that? (laughs) And basically it just meant my life sucked and I couldn't go to Dairy Queen when everybody else was like, that was it. Like, I don't know. I didn't know anything else. And there was like a pill or something that they wanted me to take. And I was kind of like, no, thanks. And it wasn't until I found a naturopathic doctor to help me. I was just lost. So what would you say to that? Well, and I think things have changed because I've been in practice for a long time now. Um, And the way that I learned about things, especially around IBS and gut conditions, it's changed significantly at this point. So we used to say with things like irritable bowel syndrome, which is really common, Mm -hmm. somewhere between about 15 to 20% of the population in North America will be diagnosed with IBS. And that doesn't include the people who aren't getting diagnosed. So this is a huge problem. But we used to say it was a condition that if you didn't have any other gut condition, we just say that you had IBS, but Mm -hmm. we couldn't find anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Now that we're able to study the gut bacteria, we can actually see that there's a difference between the bacteria in people who have IBS versus people who don't. Mm -hmm. And we can actually take the bacteria from people with IBS and put them into what we call germ-free mice. So these are mice that are bred to not have any of their own bacteria. And we can give them bloating and IBS symptoms simply by transferring the bacteria. So we know that this is a massive part of it. So now for me, the way that I work, um, people come in often on referral or from um, hearing about um, the stuff that we do through our website, but I actually work with gastroenterologists and MDs and they come in to work on the dietary programs because we understand this so much more right now where we can do these elimination type things and then start to bring all the food back as we fix what's going on in the gut. Awesome. Awesome. And I think that's a really key point is that there is a reintroduction to the foods that you eliminate, right? And I mean, you're not talking about Doritos. You're talking about (laughs) foods. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you feel bad eating McDonald's and Doritos, I can't really help you with that. I have to say I have a secret love of Kraft Dinner, um, (laughs) which I realize I'm not supposed to as a naturopath. It makes me bloated every single time I eat it. Um, I'm willing to deal with that um, and just not tell my other naturopath friends about that. <laughs> um, but it's if a choice. someone's feeling choice. bad eating yeah. an omelet in the morning and an apple for lunch and their salad and chicken or whatever they're having, their lentil pasta, their um, healthy food, they're just eating real regular food right. that prairie time Laura Ingalls would have eaten that's a problem. Right. And yeah, we do a two week trial for people. Um, if people are not feeling better, um, uh, within two weeks, we generally don't continue on that pathway. Mm. If people do feel better in those two weeks, we start to work on the gut right away. And we're starting a reintroduction within four to six weeks of starting the initial elimination. Mm. Okay. Um, it okay. is not, 
it's not meant to be so hard. And mm. I think it's already hard enough. I see a ton of moms coming into my office that mm. they can't go to a soccer game because there's no bathroom on the field mm. or um, they don't want to go to their in-laws at Christmas time because they don't want to go with the list of foods and have people telling them that this is all in their head mm. and they're crazy. Mm-hmm. Like all of these things are not okay. But then the expectation is, okay, now you're just going to continue not eating anything for the rest of your life. And Mm. you're that person at the work meeting who can't eat anything off the lunch that they brought in, Mm. or you're the person at the restaurant who's really complicated and the waiter is just going back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's now really socially isolating as well. Mm. And um, I find now, especially that we are in this time of, COVID and the things that are happening that people are having to make different choices in their food as well. And for people who don't have flexibility, Mm -hmm. this gets even harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, now is definitely not the time per se to be picky with our food when we're like, we aren't able to go to the grocery store maybe for another week or two. So we're going to do with what we have. And, and I think there's also a large part of this that kind of enters in the guilt part. Like while you were saying that about like, can't go to the party, can't have this or go to the soccer game, you know, there all of a sudden these other negative emotions kind of get tied up and it's like, I'm not, I'm not fully there. I'm not fully participating. And that, like you said, can be really just awful at the end of the day, socially and emotionally. Absolutely. And, and we're also missing out on nutrition some of the time. So we can kind of spiral in this and I'll I'll see this with people who come in and they'll say, you know what, I had these symptoms and someone told me that maybe I had a problem with lactose. So I took dairy out. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, so I felt a little bit better for a while, but then it started coming back. So then I went gluten-free and I felt better again. Um, But then I, I was still having bloating. So then I noticed that onions were a problem and someone told me I should take all the beans and nuts out and, and it just keeps spiraling Mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. And and the problem's not being solved. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. And I have people who come into my office and they'll just sob because they're so frustrated and they'll say, I'm eating healthy food. And I watch people who are eating crap Mm -hmm. and I don't know what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes. How awful. Yeah, that is awful. Absolutely awful to have the physical with the mental and the social that goes with it. And Mm -hmm. yeah, to not be able to participate with your family or feel like you can go on a date with your husband. Mm -hmm. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really, it really does sort of affect all areas of your life. So what do you say to these people then, Kim? Like if they've eliminated all these things and they're going, I'm doing everything and I'm still feeling crappy, like what's going on for them? So um, first of all, I really try to reassure on the fact that the vast majority of people are able to bring food back into their life. It may not be in, in sort of the eating at Subway all the time sort of thing, but most people can have a wide variety of foods back in their diet. There are absolutely exceptions with that. Um, Certainly celiac disease is a great example or someone who has an anaphylactic allergy. I can't change that. I'm not going to suggest in any way that I can be part of bringing peanuts back into your life. They're going to try it while I hold your EpiPen. <laughs> um, that's just not something that's going to be happening yeah. on my side of things. Um, but the way that I'm looking at it, the way that I talk about it with patients is this idea that it's actually not a problem with the food when people are eating real, whole, great quality food. It is this the microbiota or these bacteria that live in on in and on us that tend to be out of balance. Mm. And this is something that we're hearing a lot about in health right now. Mm -hmm. Probably the areas of individuals with IBS and IBD like Crohn's and colitis, um, these functional gastrointestinal disorders. This is where we actually have the most information about this idea that that's where the problem actually lies. And it's kind of weird when we think about bacteria uh, because it's hard for us to get the idea that there really are good bacteria that live inside of us. 
But whenever I say that um, we have these good bacteria, what good actually means is um, we act, we're in this symbiotic relationship with bacteria. And what that means is we do stuff for them and they do stuff for us. So we provide them with a house and food and then they make stuff. They make gases and chemicals. So good bacteria, when they eat the stuff that they eat, they're going to make gases and chemicals that do good things for our health. Mm. So that could be lowering inflammation and pain, or that could be making our transit time normal. So we're not constipated or we don't have just raging, urgent diarrhea, but it can also be helping our mood. So helping us lower anxiety. The bad bacteria, they can do more things that could cause us pain or increase our bloating um, or make us more sensitive to whatever's going on. Um, and that has a lot to do with what they're eating. And we know um, that people who have IBS have more of these imbalances that are going on. So that's what we're talking about a lot of the time is that if we find that people are following the patterns, then we need to work on getting the good bacteria levels up. And again, we're always trying to focus on what we can do sort of towards the positive more of the time. So we're looking at what foods can we bring back more quickly? Um, what can we do to help the good bacteria? Because I think a lot of time, the focus is always on what can we take away? How can we kill bacteria? And that strategy isn't really moving people forward a lot of the time. Um, and I think that people just kind of get stuck mm. Um in those patterns. And that's, that's not what we want. We really just want to bring the good bacteria levels up mm. and we want to have more variety of food. So people just have a great quality of life that they can do what they want to do. Mm, that sounds so good. So are there foods that you're saying that, that feed the good bacteria, essentially feed them yes. and then they make yes. good, so actually good things happen. Right. Yeah. So we call them prebiotics. Um, so prebiotics are the food for bacteria that when they eat them will cause something good to happen in our body. Awesome. Um, so bananas are an example or chia seeds are an example. Um, but sometimes we'll see that these prebiotics can actually cause people's symptoms. Mm. Um, and this is where if we have more of the bad bacteria than we should, we can see that happening. Mm. So sometimes I'll see that really, really healthy foods will make people feel worse. Mm. And that's often a sign of a problem. So things like um, people will often go keto or paleo and they'll end up eating a ton of cauliflower and mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're like, Oh mm. no, that's not working. Mm. Um, so cauliflower is an example of a prebiotic, mm. um, that sometimes will then actually be making things worse or onions or apples. Um, mm. ap an apple a day keeps the doctor away sort of <laughs> idea, unless you have IBS or some mm. of these functional gut issues, it can actually make people feel worse. Mm. Um, and that's surprising to a lot of people. Yeah. We'll the same if see people can't eat um, like raw foods. Is that the same kind of idea? No. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit different than that. Actually, we see that often people can handle, um, like they'd be able to handle cucumbers. Okay. Or tomatoes or salad greens or peppers. Um, but some of the other foods just, they don't work and it's all based on what bacteria eat. And it's mm, kind of a okay. really weird thing to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. Um, because we never really knew that there were so many of them that existed, mm -hmm. but it's this new arm of nutritional science to actually understand what do bacteria eat? And then how does that change how we function as humans? And it's awesome. weird to think about, but we actually have more bacterial cells that live in us than we have cells of our own body. Wow. So if we don't understand what the bacteria eat and then how they change us as human beings, we're basically missing half of how we function as humans. Wow. 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 I, I love this. First of all, I love that this is so like so sciencey that they're able to do this testing <laughs> and stuff now. I love that. But also, you know what? I mean, 
I really love that they're finding out more and more around, you know, the fact that our immune systems and our immunity is linked in our gut, our moods, like you said, right? And serotonin is housed and made in the gut, right? There's so many really cool things that we're learning. I love this stuff. I am a crazy person about it. (laughs) I pretty much dry my hair while I am reading about these things because... (laughs) It's totally changing how we understand about humans and the way Mm -hmm. that I thought about food Mm -hmm. when I graduated compared to what I think about it now and Mm. what I choose to eat or how I choose to do things. I'm actually often thinking more about how can I feed my bacteria to keep them as happy as possible. I love that. Um, When we live in an environment that often does things that doesn't help them. Yeah, well, I think we need a Um, shift in how we're focusing on our food too, right? It's like enough with the calorie counting, enough with this and that. Like it's what is actually helping us feel better. Yeah, and it is that holistic perspective that I think the idea of constantly micromanaging and eliminating and having fewer and fewer things we're realizing why that's not working for a lot of people right? or why it might work in the short term that you feel better because you stop feeding the imbalance, but then we're not helping the good and we're not giving the nutrition that we need both to the bacteria and our own cells. And then things start to slide again. Right. Um, so it's, it's so fascinating to me. And it's one of the things that I find because we've got this science behind it, when I'm talking to my patients about this, I can see that light bulb going off and they're like, I will do this crazy dietary program for two weeks. Right. And because I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it more understandable and then it's more motivating to do it. Hey, hey, Fit Mama. I'm just going to interrupt this episode quickly to tell you a little bit more about what Kim Dr. Kim Bretz is doing right now. She is such a wealth of information and she has created ways to help you with your gastrointestinal pain or any kind of feeling that your gut is off. I love that Kim believes that people should eat without pain. And I've had too many to count people in my life between clients, friends, family, or anyone else that I come across who has including myself, feelings that they feel sick. No matter what they eat, they have inappropriate gas or pain. They can't go to you know the soccer game or the restaurant or the road trip because there's no bathroom. And it's not okay. She agrees with this. She actually talks about this on a daily basis. And I know you are like me, Fit Mama, and that is just not okay. She believes in health. She believes that we can feel good no matter what we eat. Although she does say a little something about Doritos and Big Macs. And she says those things are going to kind of just make you feel crappy no matter what, which I tend to kind of agree with her on that. So, you know, it's really dependent on what you eat. But if there are things that are actual foods not made in a laboratory or with weird things, then then you should not feel sick eating them. And if you do, there's something going on at this level. So she feels that health is not limiting your diet more. And it's not about more and more restriction to the point of having no foods that you can eat, worrying that you have allergies or intolerances to this, that, and the other. She thinks that life and health does not have to be this hard and that science can make it easier. So she really helps you with the best research available along with her clinical practice. And she combines this with her patient preferences. So it really is about you. It's not a one-way street and it's about working together. So I love that she's doing this. I think she can really have an impact on you. If you feel like you're having gut issues, I would get in touch with her, Dr. Kim Bretz ND on social media. I will have all her stuff linked up in the show notes. As you know, before we get back to her, know that she is beginning to run group programs because now she sees that people are needing this more than ever. And IBS has not gone away just because COVID came to town, possibly. So hopefully not. And hopefully you're feeling well, but she feels that she can help you if you are feeling 
irritable bowel or issues in your bowels and gut, and she can help you move through this efficiently with her four-step process to working food back into your diet, not taking it out. So before we get back to her, I just want to let you know, the links are in the show notes, connect with her. She's a wealth of information and experience, and she will absolutely help you. Back to the podcast. Right. And then we have the exit strategy on the other side. Right. Because I think when it just, I'll get people who they'll come in and they'll just be like, well, I thought I had to do this for my entire life <laughs> and I can't do this. Mm-hmm. And that's reasonable. I don't want people mm-hmm. to hate their food. Mm-hmm. I love food. If mm-hmm. I had to avoid everything mm-hmm. all the time, mm-hmm. it'd be super sad. Yeah, like, very, <laughs> for sure. Food is a wonderful part of us and community and our celebrations totally. and our grief and it's it's just part of the human experience and, and to right not now have that to yeah me and I agree it's horrible it is horrible and I think right now I mean I'm sure you've seen them there's memes going around about how everyone's like emotional eating on COVID and they can't get themselves out of the fridge or the cupboard and it's like uh, there we go back into you know fat phobia and all these different diet situations situations where at the end of the day it's like how do you feel yeah and it's okay to emotionally eat right now and it's okay to get into those places right but it's like how is it making you feel absolutely yeah yeah Yeah, we want uh, people to feel good about their food choices we do and Um, you do a great job with humor too kim I'm not to cut you off. I just want to, I, I don't want to forget that I want to tell people that you are hilarious and I'm sure they've already caught on listening to you, but you just have a way with it because it can all be so serious, right? It's like nutrition, what I'm eating. Oh my gosh, the judgment, whether it's from myself or someone else and the guilt and shame cycle, like you kind of get people out of that a little with your humor. Tell us about that. I just don't think that health is about being the numbers and the strict all the time and being perfect because we're not. Mm -hmm. And if we're not able to laugh about this and we're not able to look at some of the ridiculous nature that comes to whether it's sort of the traditional mainstream medicine or this more holistic, I'm going to eat kill 80 times a day, (laughs) And like, it's all just something that we have to be able to laugh at this. Um, And we just need to be able to laugh um, because that's one of the other things that I see so much within this um, is that people are sad and stressed and scared. And they've often, by the time they're coming to see me in many cases, They've been to their family doctor. They've been to the gastroenterologist. They've had the colonoscopy and the other tests done. And now they're being told, okay, go see this naturopath, um, which is great that I work in a system that I have the MDs and pharmacists and individuals who are referring into my office. Um, But they've already been through so much. And we're talking about people's bowel movements constantly (laughs) and gas and all these things that are so awkward. We just need to be able to laugh about this. Mm -hmm. And because there's so much stress otherwise that I'm not adding to it. I am just going to hit it straight on and we're going to, we're going to find the humor in this while we work on making it feel better. That's it. We need to laugh. That's, you know, it's just such a great perspective. I know for me, I do take things seriously all the time and it's like, okay, just chill. Like, you know, and I love it because you share such valuable stuff online and, you know, just make good jokes, right? Like it's just fun. And I just appreciate it. And I think right now, especially COVID is taking over the airwaves on all levels And it's nice to kind of just get out of it a little bit and have that breath of fresh air that isn't, you know, strict, strict, strict. It's just about, hey, okay, what's going on? Let's assess this. How can we add a little bit more of these into our life and be just a little bit more intentional while still accepting ourselves and how we are? Absolutely. Yeah. We have to 
we have to be realistic about what is happening in the world at this moment. Yeah. It is not okay. It is not business as usual. There are so many changes that are happening every single, I was going to say every single day, but oh, basically every so single much. hour yeah. at this point. Yeah. It's people are so agitated and, and there's so much that's going on, even though people are finding rays of sunshine within this, it Mm -hmm. is something that I am seeing even things in my own life that, um, I actually like my virtual visits and I used to do virtual visits from my office in between other visits, but I'm finding that people who never had that experience Experience before are actually really surprised about that. Mm-hmm. Or my husband and I go for a walk at lunchtime all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, these things that we're adding into our days that are amazing, but realistically, this is really stressful right now. Yeah. Um, so we need to talk about about those things as well. Um, mm-hmm. But again, if we can sort of inject some fun into it or laugh at ourselves when we are we are feeling that little bit better that we can reflect on on sort of how we're handling things mm-hmm. and and find a little bit of humor in it i think that's really good as well definitely i mean i really 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 believe in humor and actually when i was doing my masters and i was studying well well, specifically, I was studying health and exercise psychology, but I was looking at willpower and self-control. And we did a study specifically looking at emotions and how they affected self-control. And the more positive emotional headspace we were in, the more willpower and self-control we had. And I think that this goes for, you know, being in these times that we're saying, oh my gosh, get me away from the fridge. You know, it's really just about being in the right headspace and saying, hey, you know what? I'm not going to feel good after I have this. What's another way for me to feel better in this moment that is going to be more uplifting, right? And I think it's so easy to get tuned into the news right now because we want to know what's going on. We want to stay safe, but it can be overwhelming. And that right there, I feel like overwhelm and the news is going to lead to worse bacteria in the microbiome. You hear me? For sure. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, and it's funny because I always get the question of what do I eat? Like, Yes. Am I paleo? Am I keto? Am I vegan? Like, what right. am I? Yes. And I'm not anything. Oh, me um, too. Me at too. All. I, I agree. Would say yeah. My biggest health choice for me is to eat the most vegetables possible. <laughs> and then I just accent everything else around that. But I admit it fully that I somehow have ended up with a 10 pound bag of flour in my house right now <laughs> in the whole cook. Oh, it's shopping things, oh. which I don't normally have flour in my house, not because I don't ever eat wheat. I just feel like I don't need to have it in <laughs> my house because it will lead to me making things that are generally not as good. So I am still eating a ton of vegetables. That right. is still my underlying philosophy, whether I'm in COVID or not. Right. We may have made a cake now, um, <laughs> and I may have made a pizza crust uh, because of the 10-pound bag of flour, um, but I'm not going to beat myself up for that. No. It is not worth it. I know that I'm still doing great things for my microorganisms by trying to give them the widest amount of plant food possible, but you know what? It's covid and I ate cake, um, mm-hmm. and I'm mm-hmm. not sad about that. Well, anytime and you eat cake, you can be not sad about it, right? And I think it's just that <laughs> mindset. It's just a choice, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's really, really valuable to remind us always, because we are the ones that add that guilt to it. I mean, we could even be out with someone, and we'll say to them, you know, oh, I know I shouldn't have this, but, but it's like... You, you know, you're the one putting that on yourself. The other person or persons are probably tuned into their own world and not even noticing what you're eating or not. And sure. we add that really kind of microscope to the situation. And that's what I'm always encouraging people to kind of like just relax a little bit around it. And I think what you do without putting all those rules and things is exactly that. It allows it to be a little bit more, you know, just chill versus strict. We, uh, 
I just, I don't want it to be that way. And that's where, if we can talk about what are the things that would be added value to your health, like mm. what are going to be great, great things to feed your microbiota? Yes. It's weird, but I have learned to like oats um, oh, because they have such a great prebiotic effect to them. Mm. Um, so feeding the good bacteria so we can do good things. Um, it's actually something that I use a lot. It's one of the only grains that I actually um, start out with for my patients with Crohn's and colitis because it seems to have so many good properties, including Excellent. lowering inflammation. But I didn't like oats because the only way I ate it was breakfast oats. Mm. Um, and unless I added basically as much sugar as I had <laughs> oats, I thought it was disgusting <laughs> and never ate it. So now I've realized that I can use it in grain bowls the same way I would use rice or quinoa. Mm. But I'm actually helping my microbiota more mm. if I use oats. So I add it to everything, but I have it more in a savory form. So if we can find those little things around what positive things that we can do mm -hmm. um, and not have as much focus on you must, you must take away, you must avoid that, you must never do this. Right. Or eat it, it in a certain way. I think that's so a good easier. one. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. that's, I mean, yeah. when you were talking, I was thinking I always make oat flour, uh, muffins and banana bread and pumpkin mm -hmm. scones and all those things. And, um, you know, that is another way to get it in is just by blending the oats, right. And putting them in, For but you're sure. right there. A savory is a brilliant idea. And I think now I feel like we're so fortunate because everything is just a Google away that we can, you know, find new recipes and, and get new ideas. So I would love to hear more of these foods. And I think it's a good one if, you know, to, you know, if we are having, like you said, you know, an apple's a good one. And then all of a sudden, if you eat that, then it becomes not feeling good for you, right? And I'm using the terms good and, and bad kind of loosely in terms of what, yes. what outcome they're giving in terms of your bacteria. What would you say to that? Yeah, so I, I do think that our foods can give us really, really important important clues about what is happening on the inside. Mm. So for me, if I am seeing that people are sort of having these bad physical reactions to foods and some of the examples, uh, some we've talked about, but like cauliflower, onions, Brussels sprouts, um, hummus, apples, um, even things like um, blackberries, too many almonds, when we're seeing that those foods are causing these negative physical symptoms like bowel changes or bloating or heartburn, um, that's often indicating that there's this imbalance going on with the bacteria. Um, but we can use still other foods to try and help things out once we've sort of figured it out. Um, so it allows us to kind of use food as almost like a diagnostic test mm -hmm. to tell us what's wrong. Um, and then on the other side, we use other foods to try and allow us to bring back those other foods that originally were causing us the physical symptoms. Right, that right. That so makes sense. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. And it's so, I'm so happy to hear this because I find this to be quite common, actually. And I like this idea of sort of exploring and, and really learning and understanding, right? Cause that's, that's, that's power when we know, when we have that knowledge of our own body hmm. and that it's it changing. Really I think that's the big thing, right? Okay. I can't eat the blackberries right now. Cause every time it makes me f not feel good, what's going on here. How can I make sure that I can eat those? Absolutely. And that's where, and, and again, we're just getting more and more information, but we can work with really specific prebiotics, really specific probiotic supplements, um, a lot of the gut healing things that are there. Um, but there's so much that we can just do with stress management and sleep and food, um, even things that people can be working on at home right now um, that may not be a full treatment plan, but starting to do some gardening. We've done some really fascinating studies around how soil can help with the microbiota and mm -hmm. mood. It's one of the reasons I actually started my own little 
mini backyard um, crazy garden that at one point I decided that I was going to be growing quinoa and little mini cucumbers. <laughs> I based everything on color and funny shape or name. Um, <laughs> they had... <laughs> Then you realize that if you grow quinoa in your backyard, it's gorgeous, actually. There's something called Ooh. cherry vanilla quinoa. Mm. And if you want a nice accent in your backyard, I highly recommend growing wow. it. It's beautiful. Wow. But unless you are willing to like, harvest it and mm. thresh it in your garage to get the little <laughs> seeds, <laughs> turns out it's not a great strategy, actually. Um, but it makes me kind of proud to... <laughs> think that I am an urban quinoa farmer. So <laughs> there's like good that comes with it. Um, but it's something that we know that the food that we're growing ourselves that we can control can mm. be a really great starting point for working on our gut. Mm. And even if it's as simple as having some of that basil and thyme that you can get from the grocery store that you just keep alive for a longer period of time or putting a planter onto your balcony. For me, I have a backyard. It's a really tiny backyard, um, but it drains really horribly. So almost everything that we have is in pots or in these raised beds. Mm. Um, so it doesn't have to be sort of that traditional picture of um, a giant, someone in the country right. who has this perfectly tilled thing. Um <laughs> I have a total crazy backyard garden um, that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And I know, again, that both the soil and the food that I'm growing are great for my gut. And mm. I highly recommend it. I love that. What a great tip. And that is, you know, that's a great idea for something to do, especially with the kids. I mean, my kids at their school, they have these little plant boxes. And as a class, they get to choose which veggies and things they want to plant in it. Everybody's a part of it. Then they get to eat to bring home a little snap pea or something and it's so fun they get so into it so I really oh. really think it's brilliant yeah I think it's amazing one of the things that I actually will do because um with the kids that come in to see me mm. um we try to set it up that um when we're changing things up that they're a scientist mm. and their parents are the research assistants in their Ooh, science experiment I like that um, so we're I know. Um, and it works really well with that. But we often talk about the ideas of gardening and, and getting kids involved with food more. Mm -hmm. um, because I find that when kids are involved with food, um, whether it's choosing something at the grocery store or when the markets are open or helping with picking a recipe out or things that they're often more willing to to eat those foods as well mm -hmm. so with gardening we have things like um how to do a pizza garden mm. um so that they're planting some of the things that you would put on a pizza mm. um or a calming um garden where they're growing lavender and chamomile and mm, things cute. that um that kids would like as well. So I love that style of things or the, the pick and grab ones where mm. there's peas and carrots and things mm -hmm. that if you have good soil, you just basically wipe it off and kids are good to go. And so you great. can get purple carrots and you can have these little mini, um, mini cucumbers that are basically the size of your thumb and, and kids so love cute. that stuff or oh, lime yeah. green tomatoes. There's all these crazy things that sure. you change the color or you put a funny name on it and kids are like me they'll eat it in a heartbeat <laughs> totally so true so true this has been so valuable kim i know i could ask you questions and we could keep chatting for a long time here um <laughs> but is there anything you want to leave us with today so i would say that Really, the way that I want people to be thinking is, first of all, we should be able to eat without pain. Mm. It is not normal if you are eating real healthy food and you're not feeling good with it. Something is absolutely wrong with that. But also that health is not having to avoid food. So if that's the only way that you can manage your symptoms, I don't think that necessarily means that thing or that someone is really healthy at that point either. Mm. Um, so I really want people to be putting it into their mindset that they're going to be healthy and they're going to be able to 
eat food with their family and with their friends um, and, and feel really great while that's happening. And there's a lot of strategies um, that can help people move in that direction right now. And I think this is a time where we're able to really look at what our priorities are and kind of have a reset on on what we're doing and and how we're moving forward. And I think that's really exciting. Yes, well said. I could not agree more. I think that's such a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. And yes, so we're going to link up all the ways to find you and connect with you online in the show notes. And I'm just so grateful for your time today, Kim. Kim Bratz, you are amazing. Thank you. (laughs) You are too. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you again. How awesome was Kim? She's so fun. She's so funny. She's great. She's helped me a ton. She really shares amazing things online. She's such an inspiration and I don't know. There's just something about her. So get yourself out there. Click the links in the show notes. Share this episode, please, with a friend. Subscribe to the Fit Mama podcast if you aren't already subscribed on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever you listen. And please give us a review. That's a super helpful act that we would appreciate here at the Fit Mama podcast. Thank you for being here. Thank you again, Dr. Kim Bretz, and all the best to your gut. 